All right. Um, so my name is Jonathan. I'm an alcoholic. I'm originally from Los Angeles. Um, both my parents are Colombian. Uh, I never really felt a part of uh, my family just because of the fact that I uh, was the first to be born in America. I'm the first and only on both sides of the family to only speak English. Um, on both sides, everyone speaks Spanish. So from an early age, I've kind of always felt different, specifically from my family. Um, my mother remarried when I was four, uh, had my sister and my stepfather was from Louisiana, um, and convinced her that he didn't want to raise my sister in, in the city. And we, we moved to Louisiana. Um, I had a fairly normal childhood. Uh, stepfather was relatively abusive, uh, physically, mentally, just emotionally, all that. Um, and when I was 11, my real father passed away. Um, at the time I was told he was, uh, he, he passed away naturally. Um, two years later, I moved to Sunset, Louisiana. Um, and very shortly after that, I, uh, found out how my father passed away, um, Long story short, my girlfriend at the time spent the night at my neighbor's house. My mother so happened to be there, overheard a conversation. And the next day at school was like, I didn't know your dad was murdered in a drug deal, uh, gone bad. Um, and that catapult me into a state of, of just a rebellious kid. Um, I got into as much trouble as possible. Anything my stepfather told me to do, I did the opposite. Um, I started to fight um, frequently and I, I, I got physical with my stepdad pretty often. Um, he, he would go back and forth from like swinging on me and the next day try to be my friend, buying me like a gift or like smoking pot with me or drinking with me. Um, and one night, He's he's smoking pot with me, drinking, and he basically said, um, you can do whatever you want. If you want to quit school, if you want to uh, go to work with me in the plant, um, basically threw the towel in. But I, I in my head was like, I call bull. It's going to go back to the same old thing. You're just drunk. Um, and that later that night, uh, I ran away from home. Um, a year prior to that, I had to go to uh, finish school. I, I got expelled my freshman year and then um, moved in with my grandmother and finished the school year out over there. Um, so the following year when he did this, I called a friend of mine and was like, hey, let's go to Albuquerque. Um, and I packed a bag and we, we, we hauled butt and drove all the way to Albuquerque. Um, at the time, I was thinking since he was 18 and I was only 15 that he, if we got in any trouble, it would fall on him since he's the adult. Um, at, and, and after like two months of staying in Albuquerque on our way back, we got arrested. Um, the truck that was his was under his parents' name. They reported it stolen. Um, and my plan backfired because they dropped the charges. His parents came pick him up and I ended up having to go to a uh, juvenile hall um, and as a runaway, you're basically property of the state until your parents come get you. Uh, I stayed there for about three months. And uh, at the time, I didn't realize, but my stepfather gave my mom an ultimatum, me or him. Um, and I think after like two or three months, she just decided to come get me. And he lived up to his word. When, when I got back home, he packed up his stuff. And I literally had no... Uh, adult supervision after that my mom went into a deep depression she started drinking every day um uh, and i basically just was a wild kid uh living uh, a lifestyle of a drug dealer i idolized that my dad was in the mafia um and i did that for many many years um eventually a lot of my friends started overdosing and passing away um, I lost my best friend 
uh, I felt a lot of guilt from it. Um, I helped him obtain the, the drugs and that same night he, he, he overdosed. Um, and I remember going to his funeral thinking, um, it should have been me. Um, his, his daughter approached me. She might've been four or five handed me a flower. and was like, daddy's sleeping. Like it didn't really register to her and it hit me like a ton of bricks. I had just recently had my son and I realized in that moment that, um, I'm going to end doing the same thing. I'm, I'm going to end up killing myself doing drugs. Um, me and him were both basically dosing the same amount. Um, I started IV using and I, I basically just didn't know how to stop. Um, and was scared that I, I, I'd, I'd leave my child uh, to be a, you know, not having his father in his life. And I know how that felt. It, it, it made me kind of question my path at the time. Um, mind you, I'm having trouble sleeping. I'm having a lot of guilt for the lifestyle I had. Um, I would have night terrors, people chasing me, guns shot at me. Um, I just, th that moral compass was not sitting well with me, what, what, what kind of lifestyle I was living. Um, I ended up, stopped going to my pain management. Um, so like a few years before that, I had broke my back and that's how I got addicted to pain pills. Um, but once I stopped taking the pills, I replaced one thing with another and I started drinking, um, and it just, it's a progressive disease. Uh, the best way I can describe it is if you throw a, a frog in a pot of boiling water, it's going to jump out. But if you slowly crank up the heat, that frog's going to boil. Um, that And that's how my alcoholism started. Um, my son was about four years old. I separated with his mom and uh, I went into depression and I started drinking uh it was a beer after work every day, turn into a half pint, turn into I can't go to sleep unless I'm drinking to the point where eventually I couldn't hold a job because I couldn't make it to lunch anymore without having some type of alcohol in me. Um, and I started this vicious cycle of drinking, jail, being homeless, and then going to a homeless shelter and then trying to get back on track. Um, and I, I, I tried everything. Um, six consecutive years, it, would, it was in my mind, if I get the girl or if I get the car or the job, relocate, I tried all of this. Um, and I always end up messing it all up and going right back to just losing everything that I've ever gained. And um, in 2019, I was panhandling and a friend of mine uh, seen me. Uh, at this time, I'm addicted to uh, synthetic marijuana and, and alcohol. And all I can think about every morning was how I'm going to get get my next fix. Um, my reality sucked and I was trying to escape. Uh, no matter how much I drink or use, I'd still wake up every morning um, and literally did not want to live anymore. Um and he seen me, he, he suggested maybe I should try sober living. He gave me a few numbers. And that same day, I got arrested for stealing a pair of boxers out of a family dollar um, and had to go serve 21 days on that charge. And I really was reflecting while I was in jail, like maybe, maybe I should try sober living. I never considered myself an alcoholic. Um the culture here is it's it's very acceptable for drinking. It's sold in every gas station here. Um, and I, I got on the tailmate trying to find like a resource like, hey, can someone help me get into sober living? And I never got a reply. And I remember thinking. I'm, I'm going to do this some way, somehow I'm, I'm going to try to get sober. Um, and I got released, walked out of jail turn around, walk right back in and ask for someone to help me with some phone numbers. Uh, that friend of mine that gave me that number before I went to jail, uh, he, he planted a seed for me. Um, 
and I wanted to try to get sober. I, it's kind of like the first story in the Bible. When you tell me I can't have something, uh, you tell me I can't have that apple, I want that apple. And that 21 days while I was in jail, I didn't get one reply, and it made me want it even more. I truly believe God did that with a purpose. Um, and I got released. I got some phone numbers, and I went right back to the Circle K little gas station, got a half pint, and borrowed their phone. And, and I remember staring down at the bottle thinking to myself, I don't want to do this anymore, but I don't know how to stop. Um, and that was the last time I've drank. I called the number on the phone uh, to the sober living and uh, I got into an Oxford house and I did fairly well. When I first got there, uh, the rest of the guys basically all went to this meeting. It's called kitchen table at 7 a.m. Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And um I just had enough willingness just literally to get a piece of paper signed uh, for my house. And it, it ended up saving my life. Um, if it wasn't for that house, I would have never stepped into an AA meeting. Um, but I just had enough willingness to do something different. And I remember my first encounter with Y Paul. So I'm maybe two weeks sober. Um, and someone posted on Facebook about going to, uh, um, to practice for a bit skit. So apparently Lacey Paul was going to be in New Orleans like a week later. Um, and I randomly was like, can anybody give me a ride? And, um, uh, Chrissy picked me up and I went to this little bit skit and I, I seen everyone just having fun, cutting up, um, but I was on um newcomer contract. I wasn't able to attend Lacey Paul that year because I wasn't able to sleep out of my house for the first 30 days. But I had like that fellowship that I really want. I seen that you can be sober and have fun, um, which I thought was weird. And I remember Afterwards, I wanted to sign up and get go to Lacey Paul. And then uh, that next year, COVID came around. So that got pushed back. And then I signed up for Icky Paul, and that got pushed back. Um, the International Conference of Young People, AA, was hosted in New Orleans. Um, eventually, they set some dates. Um and I attended my first Lacey Paul and I, I got hooked. I literally wanted to be a part of this and, and stay a part of it. Um, I had a lot of friends that throughout the state that were there. I brought my son, he turned 12 there. Um, at this time, I had just came back um, after leaving my sober living house. I ended up relapsing uh, on Duster, and I started my sobriety date over. And my sobriety date's February 7, 2021. Um, and I attended my first Lacey Paul, my wife Paul, Cherry, uh, at 11 months sobriety. Um, and I was grateful for that opportunity. Um, I just started running a sober, uh, privately owned sober living house and a friend of mine, uh, Tyler, um, he was on a newcomer contract and I remember telling him, uh, just get in the car. Um, we'll figure it out later. If, 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 if anything, I'll, I'll get in trouble for it. And I'll tell him that I said it was okay. And I ended up bringing them with me. We had three other guys in my house. We, we we had a total of four guys go to this Lacey Paul, and we all got hooked. Uh, we all went to Cirque Paul, the Southeast, Southeastern Region Conference of Young People in AA. It was in Baton Rouge that year. I so happened to just moved to Baton Rouge uh, the week prior. Um, we all got to go to Icky Paul together. It was shortly after that. Um and then maybe six months later, I remember Tyler passing away and just remember thinking that I was glad to experience those three uh, conferences with him. Um, when we got back home, 
the guy that's above me calls me up and he's like, did you bring the new guy to that YPA, uh thing? And I was like, yeah. He was like, uh, you weren't supposed to do that. And I was like, I know that feeling of watching everyone else go um, and not being able to experience it. And I was like, if I, I got to be put on newcomer contract or put on restriction, it's it's all on me. Um, and I'm grateful that I was um, – able to share those experiences with Tyler. Um, I've learned a lot through AA. Uh, one of the biggest things early on in my sobriety, uh, my sponsor made me do was a gratitude list. Um, he told me I always spoke victimese. Um, for some reason, I thought as long as I was sober, life would go my way. But uh, the reality is, no matter how sober you are, life still happens. Um, and sometimes it sucks. But uh, when I did these gratitude lists, I realized um, things are good. They may not be great, but it's OK. I learned how to be just OK. Um, I remember calling my sponsors saying, Man, the sober living house sucks. Walking to work sucks. Waking up early sucks. Uh, paying this rent sucks. Um, and he told me I got to do a gratitude list every morning, list 10 things I'm grateful for. And anytime I feel like my life sucks, go help someone else. Um, shortly after that, I seen a post on Facebook, someone asking to move a washing machine. I said, here's my opportunity to just knock this out. And I went and helped this person and she literally just lost her job, just got evicted. And I realized I have a job. I have a home. I'm close enough to walk to work. I have a job. Um, I'm able to pay my rent. Um, and I always share this with, with newcomers. The things we focus on tend to be bigger. Um it's kind of like when a skier goes down a, a, a slope, they don't focus on don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree because they're going to hit the tree. But if you focus on the path, the path gets bigger. Um, if I'm focused on my higher power, he seems bigger. If I'm focused on things to be grateful for. I tend to be more grateful. Um, I guarantee if you focus on the sun, it, it seems brighter. Um, and that's what gratitude lists do for me. Um, when you love life, life loves you back. And those gratitude lists really put things in perspective for me. Um, that there's always something to be grateful for. And there's always um, someone you can help anytime you're struggling. There's many times where I struggled and I would call a sponsor and I'm like, hey, let's get together a little further. Um, and it, it always saves me from drinking. Um, when we come in these rooms, we have these uh, this, these these things that block us from our higher power, these ideas in our head of how life should be or go my way. But when they don't, my perspective changed to where, like, instead of why me, it's more of a what is this teaching me? Um, what's the lesson? I remember one time my truck broke down and I was... I was pissed off and I started asking myself some questions. Why does this suck? And then I realized like, no matter what, this truck is not equal to my happiness, no matter where I'm trying to go or trying to do something. I've done it before on foot, rode the bus, rode my bike. Um, and I moved around and I got, I got places where I needed to be. Um, and the truck won't hold me back from that. And I'm trying to figure out what the lesson was. And um, at this time, I was working nights for a treatment center. And I was known to help a lot of people with service work, helping them move in and out of sober living houses. And I really didn't know how to tell people no. Um, and for a whole month, this truck was down. And I eventually learned what the lesson was when people would call me asking for help no, I can't help you. And I started to enjoy it. Like someone will call me like, nope, can't help you. Um, 
And I, I, I truly believe God did for me what I couldn't do for myself. I, I, I leaned into it. I leaned into the suck. Where's the lesson? Why, why am I going through this? And I, to this day, when I schedule some downtime, um, I tell people I'm busy and I'll be busy doing nothing because uh, I can't pour from an empty cup. I can't set myself on fire to keep everyone else warm. Um, and I, I've learned to keep some boundaries with my personal life to recenter, to to recharge, to to just not burn out. Because um, I'm the type of person that goes and goes and goes um, and, and forget sometimes that I need rest. Um, and those are just some things that like helped me early on uh, life lessons. I truly believe God gives us these battles to push us to growth. Uh, if you keep having the same battle, you're you're not learning the lesson. Um, and today when like things aren't going my way, I, I feel like God is molding me. Um, today with prayer and 10 step inventory and working with sponsors, sponsees, um, I feel led by God. Um, I no longer have to run the show. Um, and when things aren't going my way, I don't have to freak out. I don't have to drink. I don't have to use. Um, I've gotten the opportunity to work for the same company that helped save me from me. I actually worked for the same sober living house that I first walked into the door. Um, and thankfully, they actually checked meeting slips, uh, which which pushed me into the direction of AA. Um, and open up a whole nother door of, of opportunities and, and just a whole nother world. I never knew existed. Uh, when I came into the rooms, I, I didn't know anything about recovery. I didn't have this in my head that I'm going to get a sponsor. I'm going to work the steps. All I knew was I needed this paper signed and that's all it took for me to get into that room. Um, and all these years where I didn't feel a part of, I finally found somewhere that I felt a part of, um, I was accepted exactly where I was at. Um, and I learned to love myself again, uh, all the guilt, all the shame, all the, just everything got washed away, um, with working the steps. Uh, the first time I went through the process of working the steps with a sponsor, I was not thorough at all. But when I came back, I realized that I had to do this 100% because this disease has a hit out on me. And if I do not um, do this 100% every single day, it's, it's out to kill me. I have to stay consistent. I can't stay sober today on yesterday's prayers. Um, and I got to put in the work. Uh, it's a full-time job for me to stay sober. I truly believe you have to have someone you tell absolutely everything to. Um, and when I did that with a proper thorough fourth step, fifth step, I had my spiritual experience. Um, something about telling another human being just how human I am, how flawed I am and all these things that I, thought I couldn't share it to another person um, is what saved my life. Uh, the things you think you can carry to the grave will ultimately carry you to the grave. I was actually able to sponsor other people and not feel like a fraud. I was able to look in the mirror and just know that I'm doing my best. Uh, I had a lot of resent resentments on myself for not being a good father, good brother, good son. But when I actually put it on paper and realize if you take the alcohol away, um, I'm not all these things I think I am in my head. Um, I'm actually a good father and good son, good brother. Like I have relationships with my family now. I was disconnected for so many years from my son. Um, I didn't have a relationship with my mom. Uh, me and my sister went years without talking. And today um, 
I had that connection with my family. My son frequently calls me and asks me, hey, can I come pick him up? Can he come stay over the weekend? Um, I financed my very first vehicle ever in my life. Um, I'm repairing my credit score. I finally found a purpose. And for me, it's it's helping another alcoholic. It's It's providing guidance for some reason when I'm helping someone else. Uh, when I'm given direction, it gives me direction. Um, I, I actually moved away from my hometown and I stayed connected with my YPAW group for the longest time. Um, I've, I feel valued. I've never really felt that, um, growing up. Um, I always felt like outside looking in, but with my current YPAW group from Lafayette. That day when I seen them having fun sober, I felt like I wanted that. And today I, I'm a part of something bigger than myself. Um, all the people that's in my group, I'm, I'm grateful for them. We have really close relationships. Um, I live an hour away from Lafayette and I still attend the business meeting. Um, and my first year I was events chair and it's something that I was actually very good at. Um, I learned that I, I know how to get a, a group of people together and, and host activities and do things together. And for me, I love that, to try to help another person find out about what we are, uh, that newcomer that just has no clue about life and and gets to have fun sober and, and realize, like, this is an actual thing. I recently moved to Alexandria. Um, last month, we've hosted our first um, YPAW business meeting for uh we're putting on a bid in this area for Lacey paul um and i'm i'm just grateful to be a part of that starting off and, and just trying to get a group together just to do exactly what i did in lafayette um to share that same experience of just being able to have fun um and stay sober 